Hi, this is George Woody. Welcome to my studio. Today's lesson is our first look at something that I call the harmonic pocket. It's a really important principle of improvised music. Uh, it was shown to me just after I left Berkeley, um, and it really revolutionized my playing. I would say it's the most important thing that anybody ever taught me. Uh, it's a way of really locking your playing into the harmony that you're blowing on and using that harmony as leverage to create a really dynamic line, that a lot of tension, a lot of release. Um, I'm going to play a little bit for you here just to start out, and this is kind of where I've come to through my understanding of the harmonic pocket, and after that we'll discuss what this is about. Okay, so we heard a lot of different ideas there, to say the least, but the whole thing, all that playing, is informed by my awareness of the principle of what I'm calling the harmonic pocket. And what is the harmonic pocket? What I'm talking about with this is that when you're soloing, it is not enough to lock into the harmony to just be playing notes from the scale related to the chord you're blowing on we have to really pay attention to which notes of that scale we're putting on the beat and which notes we are putting between the beats. The ear perceives the harmony that it hears on the beat to be the harmony that we're blowing on. In order to be most in sync with the harmony that we're soloing on, we need to be putting chord tones on the beat. And I should note here that we don't necessarily always want to be most in sync with the harmony that we're blowing on, but an awareness of that principle is the thing that took me from a person who kind of showed promise and, and had good instincts, but still, still sounded like I was fishing, to somebody who was comfortable soloing on a stage after Michael Brecker and Mike Stern and Randy Brecker had, had taken a solo. So looking at this, it's not really a practical thing at just from moment to moment to be worrying about which notes are on the beat and which are off. Is that a chord tone and so forth? What we need to do is replace our seven note scales with eight note scales. And the reason here is pretty clear if we just take a look at it.
Okay, so let's take a look here and analyze what's on the beat. You can see that for the first bar, we've got C, E, G, and B on the beat. So you're okay there as far as playing in sync with the harmony. The next bar, however, if you look at what's on the beat, it's a D, F, A, and C. You're actually outlining a D minor seventh chord on the beat rather than the C major seventh chord that you're blowing on. Um, so effectively what you're getting instead of something that's as in sync as that, you're getting this. And that's not the sound. I mean, you know, Herbie Hancock can probably make this chord work. But for the rest of us, it's 180 degrees out of sync with the harmony. Um, on the way down, it's even worse if you look at what you get because right from the first note, from the C, you get an A, an F, and a D. So, and that, again, is 180 degrees out of phase. You're out of the harmonic pocket, if that's what you're doing. So, let's take a look now at the eight note scale and how that, this problem is solved by that. Uh, what we're going to do is add a note, a passing tone, between degrees 5 and 6 of the scale, the G and the A, and that creates an 8-note scale. And I'm going to put it in and let's analyze that. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have on the beat and off the beat here. On the beat, we are outlining a C major 6 chord. These are all very consonant notes to C major. We've got C, E, G, and A. But then as you continue up, since you're playing an 8-note symmetrical scale, again, you've got C, E, G, and A. It stays in phase, in sync with the harmony all the way up as you play. Um, when I got my head around this and started mastering these scales, it was probably about the biggest, the most important development in my playing, I think, ever. Um, you really learn how you can use this stuff to create really strong structures, and especially as you start to play outside, because these scales are, are really great for that as well. The stronger a structure you can create outside, and in this case, the more you can outline the chord that you're substituting, the clearer it is where you've gone and the clearer it is when you come back. And the point of this isn't to lock you into only playing these things or only putting chord tones on the beat, but an awareness of it and an ability to do it when you want it is really essential to playing good jazz or just soloing well on anything. Um, by way of illustration, I would now like to do my best to play really badly by playing completely out of sync with the harmony. It's difficult because I've, these things are baked into me now 30 years later or whatever it is. Um, but I'm going to do my best to play out of sync with the harmony. And then I'm going to play the same thing and play in sync with the harmony. And I think you'll recognize the difference. So here I am doing my best to play a sad solo. Now, that sounds to me, it sounds kind of weak and fishing and, uh, you know, gee, those should be legal notes, right? Because they're notes from the scale. I mean, on a G7th, you play a C major scale, and on a C major, you play a C major scale. 
but I'm kind of taking care as best I can to put the wrong notes on the beat and the right notes between the beat. So I'm out of the harmonic pocket on that one. Let's take a listen to what happens if I switch over and play in the harmonic pocket. I'm going to use a lot of these eight note scales to keep chord tones of either the G7th or the C major on the beat, and I think you'll hear the difference. <laughs> Okay, to me that's a lot better. You know, it sounds more like classic bebop. It's it's harmonically correct. It's in sync with the chords I'm playing on. And again, that's only one way to use these scales because they're very useful for making real clear statements as you start to substitute and take things out. For right now, I would suggest master start practicing and mastering the major bebop scale. Um, there are ideas for ways to practice it on the sheet that you can download related to this uh, lesson. And I would practice it starting on the, don on the tonic and just go up the different chord tones like that. We're going to learn all the bebop scales, the eight note scales. There's a dominant one and a couple different minor ones. And we're going to learn how to use those on the different chords. And then we're going to start working with something called approach patterns, which are little connectors that stitch this stuff together. And between just these two things, you can actually create a really nice bebop line. Your accountant could even create a really nice bebop line, provided he has a nice touch and good time. Uh, so that's today's lesson. Um, start practicing on these. Get them really under your fingers because the idea with this stuff is to have it so baked in there that it's what you go for. It's where your fingers fall. You don't have to think about it. And it takes a while to get that to happen. But once this in sync sound is what automatically falls under your fingers, your playing takes a huge leap. And that's today's lesson. So I'll see you for the next one.
Thank you.